How are you doing tonight, Simon? I'm good. How are you? Right. Well, basically, um, what do you think about the turnout? And what do you think we could accomplish with this type of turnout and this type of response against police brutality? Well, for one thing, I think that we're showing in New York City the fight for police brutality isn't dead. Okay, it seems that after Harry Gardner case was sent to the grand jury, uh, I think the city was given the impression that the activists and organizers sort of fell back on a wait and see what the grand jury decides. I'm glad that people are out here. This is a national event that happens yearly and it's needed and necessary because the police murders and assaults have continued to escalate with no officers being charged. We have two major cases going on right now, Eric Gardner and Michael Brown, where the evidence is clear that a murder has been committed, but the prosecutors have refused to prosecute. It's their job and responsibility to prosecute and charge those officers. What they did is they took all the evidence and they threw off the responsibility to a grand jury. Most people have never even heard of this being done by the prosecutor. The way that it goes is the prosecutor looks at the evidence and based on the evidence, he decides what charges should be brought and those charges, along with the evidence, is then presented to the grand jury. In this case, they didn't bring any charges, they simply presented evidence to the grand jury. And here in New York, the prosecutor had to get special permission from the courts to enable him to do that because it's a highly unusual procedure. So this is one of the aspects that people need to understand what's going on in the overall equation. When we say that there's a resistance and a hesitancy to prosecute officers for their crimes, this is what we're talking about. Even in the courtrooms, the prosecutors do not want to prosecute. And I also have a petition demanding the federal prosecution of those prosecutors who refuse to prosecute police for the, for the crimes committed. Check out the disparity. Blacks and Hispanics in our community are arrested based on a simple accusation of committing a crime. You will go to jail. If you cannot post bail, you will be kept in jail. The DA will say, Your Honor, we need more time. Can I have more time to present the evidence against you? Why the fuck are they keeping people locked up in jail after being accused? And then when they go to court, the DA don't have the evidence? I think you should let a motherfucker out of jail at that point. But no, they keep them in jail and tell them, okay, cop a plea. If you cop a plea, plead to the lesser charge, we'll let you go home. But that's the trick. That's the game. 99.9 .9 blacks and Hispanics in New York City got records, not because they committed the crime, but because they copped the plea, because they didn't want to stay in funky Rikers Island waiting for a trial date because they couldn't afford an attorney. The only attorney that our black and Hispanic people are given is court-appointed prosecutors. A court-appointed prosecutor is not going to spend the time, the money, or the effort to give you an effective defense. He's going to aid you in copping a plea. And once you cop a plea, you just got got by the city because now you got a record, you deemed as a criminal, and your criminal is going to serve as your death warrant, which they're going to serve on you morning, noon, or night. They kill you, and what they say, oh, he had a record. That, all, that closes all arguments, solves all discussions. Nobody wants to look at whether the police wrongly murdered you or not because they said that you had a record. That's the game that's being played on us. The police arrest you, accuse you. The courts appoint for you a court appointed attorney who works for the same state that's bringing the charges against you anyway. You see how you fool? You see how you a rat in a maze waiting to get caught? I'm saying, let's cut the ball. We're taking this to a whole nother level. National action against police brutality. That's what I'm demanding that needs to be done. Take it to the head, as we say in the hood. Take it to the head. Take it into the government and call in the United States Department of Justice out on his false claims of liberty and justice for all. Because ain't no justice when families like me and those up front gotta march and beg and plead for it. You heard? That's straight out of it. That was my open. Let me tell you something. She is a voice to be dealt with. And like she said, she's taking it straight to the head because as you know, once that head is taken off, the rest of the body begins to crumble. Yeah. So where can they get this to? It's my birthday, so I'm just like really showing out. This is my birthday, and you know, and we doing this action, and we letting them know, yup, we here, we ain't go nowhere. And where's the petition at? Change.org. www.change.org.
chains at all, petitions, or the easiest way, since everybody got a cell phone, Google National Action Against Police Brutality. It'll come right up. First thing you see will be National Action Against Police Brutality. Click it, you see a red button that says sign, sign it, done. And you said we got how many signatures? 15,000 or more? 15,317 signatures at last count and still counting. Yes. Yeah.